Fernsehen von Trinidad und Tobago, der den Kommentar Action und Gabo Bender Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2019 Equals in Tech Awards. Every year, these awards recognize the power of digital technologies to transform the lives of women everywhere. The Equals in Tech Awards also celebrate women's leadership in the tech sector and recognize outstanding research efforts in gathering the crucial data we need to help close the digital de gender divide. They are made possible by the generous support of some amazing sponsors, the Internet Society, the governments of Germany and Switzerland, and satellite operator Inmarsat. My name is Chris Kova. I'm an editor at Netzpolitik.org. And I'm Christoph Seidler for Der Spiegel. And uh, we're delighted to be your MCs for this inspiring 
hopefully inspiring evening. Tonight, you're going to meet some amazing people whose actions and commitment have earned them global recognition in the form of one of the prestigious Equals in Tech Awards. But first... So the mission of the Equals in Tech Awards is to hon honor people who are helping girls and women gain equal access skills and opportunities online and in the tech industry. And although encouraging developments took place in the last years, a whole lot remains to be done. Indeed. And uh, this is a chart showing who works at some of the largest and most influential companies in the world. And these companies, they shape through their technologies how we work, what we shop, how we see the world, how we communicate with each other. Yet, the people who develop these technologies today are overwhelmingly male and also white. So this is what we see in the chart. What we cannot see in this chart but know from other research is behind it, the women who actually work in IT in these companies are also much more likely to be stuck at junior levels. As in other areas, the tech sector also shows the higher you go up, the fewer women you find. Um, as uh, Jun uh, Sujiyama, a tech professional working in Silicon Valley for more than 20 years put it, and I quote now, by now I've grown used to being basically one of the only women in the room and um, um, I'm used uh, uh, to walking into both young startup uh, and tech giants and seeing the woman behind uh, the receptionist desk and realizing that she is the lone female. And um, um, June further uh, quotes that uh, uh, she's gone to meetups and networking events and uh, those at times uh, felt more to her like a frat party and not so much like a gathering of like-minded techies. So one could say this is a social justice issue, right? It's just plain fair to have women and other minorities represented in this field. It's also a way of, uh, to avoid developing tech that will then later hurt these communities and people when it is deployed outside of the lab. And to get more women um, in the industry, it's also just plain smart because it is an industry that is so desperately looking for talent and why would you want to discount a large part of the population? So this is why we have gathered here today to celebrate and honor those who do make a change and we're very, very happy um, that all of us will be able to hear some of these uh, success stories from um, all around the world. And as always, it has been very difficult to choose the five winners because there was such an amazing group of finalists from all over the world. And uh, let's take a moment to pay tribute to this year's 15 Distinguished Equals in Tech finalists. Ideally, there would be a little film here getting, helping you to, to get to know the finalists. So you'll get to know the long. winners later on, so I promise. But um, uh, since we're still missing some of the um, brilliant people that um, unfortunately will not get an award tonight, we'd love you to see the film. So let's see if that happens at one point or another. There it is. No? no it's That's us. <laughs> we are not the finalists. Okay, so we just go on and so maybe see if we can go back to the video later. Exactly. Um. So to, to, to set the tone for this evening, we'd uh, now like to invite one of the founders of Equals, Doreen Bogdan Martin, up to the podium to say a few words. so much Chris and, and Christoph and you know sometimes the technology doesn't cooperate so hopefully we will get that that video up before we announce our, our winners 
Um, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's really a, a great pleasure to see you all here. Uh, as some of you may recall, in 2015, when we co-founded Equals, the Global Partnership for uh, Gender Equality in the Digital Age, uh, we did it believing that linking the untapped power of girls and women as agents of change with ICTs, the most powerful tools for change ever invented, that we could truly transform the world. And I think we were right, as you'll see from some of the winners tonight. The talented women and dedicated men that we have met, the ambitious projects, actions, community actions that we've been part of, uh, the grassroots social impact that we've seen has been really incredible. Uh, and I'd like to pay tribute and recognize uh, the hundreds of organizations that have been participating in the Equals in Tech Awards since we started. And really their stories have been so, so truly inspiring. Tonight's winning projects are absolutely outstanding. Uh, choosing the winners, as, as Chris and Christoph mentioned, it was not easy. It was very difficult. Every year we think it'll get easier, and it wasn't. We had over 200 amazing competing submissions from all over the world, uh, and we're very excited to recognize our, our winners tonight. Every year, these new projects build on the great ideas of previous success stories. Uh, every year, the number of initiatives really making a difference to the lives of women and girls in their communities continues to grow. And every year, new technological advances offer new opportunities, greater reach, and of course, more powerful results. Ladies and gentlemen, for me, the Equals in Tech Awards ceremony is really one of the highlights of my, of my year, uh, not just because it's a living testimony to my belief in the power of women and technology, but because it, it really does show us up close how the small change we make at the local level can actually amplify into change at the regional level and, of course, amplify into change at the global level. It also shows us how our ideas, our commitment can end up influencing public policy and also private sector engagement. How we can truly change the world, that's what we will see tonight. Next year, the international community is gonna be commemorating the 25th anniversary of the Beijing platform, the Beijing uh, Declaration. And Beijing 25 really represents a unique opportunity for the Equals community to be able to leverage global activism around this important milestone and to also further our advance in making technology work for all of us. Empowering women and girls through digital technology will be absolutely vital to achieving the sustainable development goals. And tonight's amazing winners leave me no doubt whatsoever that achieving digital gender equality is within our reach. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doreen, for those inspiring uh, words. And um, as we were told uh, during your speech, the film is now ready. So now hold your breath for the um, 15 finalists of this year's Equals in Tech Awards.
we just saw. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged to have here with us tonight a very special guest. Her name is uh, Makeda Antoine Cambridge, and she is ambassador of Trinidad and Tobago to the United Nations and uh, specialized agencies in Europe and to Austria and Italy. But even more than that, our guest has a Bachelor of Science degree in computer systems and worked as a tech professional for over 20 years in high-level roles around the world before joining the diplomatic community. So, Your Excellency, may we um, invite you to the podium to share your thoughts on the value and importance of getting more women into the technology sector. Thank you and good afternoon to everyone. Congratulations to the organizers, Equals Global Partnership. Grateful for the invitation to participate in the Equals High Level Government Roundtable and the awards. Congratulations to all the finalists. Thank you, Ms. Bogdan Martin, Director of Telecommunications Development Bureau of the ITU for the invitation. I'd also like to acknowledge Ms. Nicole Peter Patterson and Bridget Lewis. Founders of She Leads It, who are doing amazing work in the Caribbean with the Caribbean Girls Hackathon. Yes. Incidentally, Trinidad and Tobago won the Caribbean Girls Hackathon leg this year. And congratulations to SAGS, which is the sister school of my alumni. In the next few minutes, I'll tell you a little about my country, my family, my career, and just share some of my thoughts. I come from a multicultural, multi-religious twin island republic in the Caribbean called Trinidad and Tobago. With a population of 1.3 million that composes East Indians, Africans, mixed Arabs, Chinese, Christians, Hindus, Muslims, and known for the best food in the world, and I say that unapologetically, yeah. roti doubles pilau. We call ourselves Trinbagonians, or Trinis for short, and we actually say God is a Trini. What are we known for? We're known for Carnival, the greatest show on earth and the birthplace of the steel pan. Have you heard of the International Criminal Court? Do some research. The idea originated with one of our former prime minister and president. You may know of our athletes, Atto Bolden, Dwayne Bravo, Dwight York. You may know of our artists, Marshall Montano, Calypso Rose, and our sweet soca music. I'm told there's almost everything in Berlin, and you know there's a Berlin Trini Carnival? It's held four days street party in Berlin. Of course, you know Nicki Minaj, the rapper, or Facebook's Chief Diversity Officer, Maxine Williams. Are you on LinkedIn? Bridget Hyacinth, author of The Future of Leadership, Rise of Automation, Robotics, and Artificial Intelligence. On LinkedIn, she's the second most connected woman and the most endorsed person with 2.3 million followers all Trinis. As my Prime Minister would say, we may be small, but we are significant. That can be you. We have our first female president, President Paula May Weeks, and our Prime Minister, Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley, who has pushed for a national gender policy, a national e-commerce strategy, and a national ICT plan. He also focuses on a commitment to universal education, which is ridiculously important for a young woman to be educated. For the first time, Trinidad and Tobago is a member of the CEDAW Committee as of 2018. And in 2019, we are about to launch our first innovation lab, a partnership between B-Mobile, Huawei, and the University of the West Indies. I am number seven in a family of nine, with a father who said, fear no man but God. And whatever a boy can do, a girl can do even better. His life mantra was, if there's a will, there's a way. Coming from very humble beginnings, I had to take care of my goats before I go to primary school and fetch water from the neighborhood standpipe. My mother always believed that education was one ticket out of poverty. Even if university education is now free, in my time it was not. I did my undergrad on a wing and a prayer, literally. But my dad would always support me. I must say, though, there's a role for government and our private sector. My graduate studies were funded by my government and employers. I stumbled upon a tech career, 
through a friend, but I loved it because I felt like I was making a difference, helping find solution, improving the lives of people. In this journey, young and older, I encourage you two things. Who is your support system and what is your why? Is it a friend, a teacher, a pastor, a priest, an aunt, and why? Why are you choosing a tech career? If that choice is already made, what area are you choosing and why? Programming, databases, AI, cybersecurity. I encourage you to not just be a passive employee, but a creator. For me, when the going gets tough, I think that my mother and my grandmother and my aunts would never had these opportunities. In 1998, I started with teaching high school students ICT skills, Microsoft, back in the day, Word, Access, Excel, PowerPoint. And in 2006, I started my telecom career on the verge of the liberalization of the mobile market. Prior to that, we had a monopoly, one mobile operator. Exciting times. Just give you an idea of what I've worked on. I've been fortunate to work on projects like rolling out computerized birth certificates in my country, national fiber networks, introduction of websites for all government ministries, rolling out 3G, 4G, and CDMA networks across the Caribbean, South America, and South Pacific, rolling out wireless broadband networks, developed and offered packages to customers where mobile operators moved from mobile-only services to full-blown entertainment services, offering TV and security services. I've seen mobiles and cell phones and WhatsApp calling become ubiquitous and track the decline in revenues associated with the decline in the use of landline. Fortunate to live in Kingston, Jamaica, Dubai, UAE, and launch services in 12 African countries, negotiate with some of the top mobile operators in the world, and manage revenues more than $500 million. I used to have a Nokia, a Blackberry, and now an iPhone. As was mentioned earlier, normally the only woman in the room and definitely the only woman at the negotiating table. But I was really blessed to have amazing bosses who saw my potential. And I believed whatever opportunity I got, I made the best out of it. Go hard or go home became literal for me. Consider that 10 years of my 20-year career I spent outside of my countries. I have and still continue to experience the sexism, the gender pay gap, the boys club. I look at the not so good experiences as lessons. How far have we come? How far do we still have to go? As women, we still have to work twice as hard to be even acknowledged. But why did I stay? Why did I, what did I love? I love the results. I love challenging myself. I loved improving the lives of people, the travel, the new experiences, the friends from all over the world. But then I thought I needed to give back. So in 2012, I launched my charity, Genesis the Movement, along with my sisters and girlfriends. It's all women-led, not intentional, but all women-led. And so far, we've launched in 14 schools, one university, six high schools, seven primary schools, touching more than 100 lives and spent more than 75,000 TT in the last seven years. We acknowledge and reward the most improved children awarding them with a tablet, introducing them to technology for educational purpose. In 2018, we launched at our first university, the Excellence Award, where two young women pursuing a BSc in computing receives a total of 13,500 TT towards tuition or living experiences. We are in the age of the fourth industrial revolution, where technology has impacted all areas of our lives, and disrupted all technologies. If you are a young woman in the room, consider yourself a creator. Look at all the problems in the world, and you can use technology to solve any one of them, from climate change to crime, to agriculture, to digital justice. You name it, a problem, a challenge, a situation, and technology can be used. Just yesterday I was reading that a digital learning platform to help students is placed by Hurricane Dorian in Bahamas. Approximately 1,000 students will now receive unparalleled academic support with the introduction of a one-on-one -on -one digital learning platform. With more young ladies at universities, why are they not choosing STEM and ICT? How are we going to change this? It starts with us. 
Yes, you and I. If you are a government, NGO, or potential partner in the room, I ask you, what are you contributing towards addressing and reducing gender digital divide? And if you're doing something, do you genuinely believe that you're doing enough? What are your incentives, your policies for the developed and developing world? To the young women in the room, go do it. Make it happen. Create it. Find your tribe. And it doesn't hurt that you get paid very well, you meet really cool people, and you get to travel all over the world and you're constantly learning. I will leave you with a few tips from a few successful people that continue to inspire me today. Bill Gates says, make a difference. Warren Buffett says, don't care what others think. Steve Jobs says, stay hungry, stay foolish. Oprah says, you can have it all, just not all at once. Maya Angelou says, if you're always trying to be normal, you'll never know how amazing you can be. Nelson Mandela says, as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. Michelle Obama says, don't ever underestimate the importance you can have because history has shown that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. My daddy would say, if there's a will, there's a, there's a way. I like to say, feel the fear and do it anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, for those words and also for sharing your very personal story with us here today. It now gives us great pleasure to invite Claire Sibthorpe, Head of Connected Women and Connected Society at GSMA and leader of the Equals Access Coalition to present the first Equals in Tech Award. Thank you very much, Chris and Christoph. Um, as a leader of the Equals Access Coalition, it gives me enormous pleasure to announce the, uh, this year's Equals in Tech Award winner in the category of Access. Um, this year's award goes to, drum roll, um, Dinarak for Dimrak Mobile Money Female Agent in Jordan. So first of all, congratulations, Eamon. Um, let me uh, take the opportunity to um, ask you a little bit uh, about uh, Dinarak. So since you guys launched, uh, you have uh, reached uh, about uh, 38,000 women, if I remember that correctly. Um, and I'm sure you have uh, even more ambitious plans. So what's the plan for the next five years? How many women do you plan to reach within the next five years? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, actually, we started in April 2017. Uh, we launched in uh, north of Jordan, and now we're expanding for the 12th uh, governorate. Uh, by uh, the five, uh, next uh, five years, we will reach half million female in Jordan. We will provide uh, them with uh, convenient and affordable digital financial services. That, that sounds very ambitious, so the best of luck to you and congratulations again. Thank you so much. Let me now invite Cedric Wachholz, Chief ICT in Education, Culture and Science with UNESCO to present the second Equals in Tech Award, this time in the category Skills. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, I'm very happy uh, to announce today the very, in the vital area of digital skills, um, the, this year's Equals in Tech Award, and the winner is the Women's Technology Empowerment Center from Nigeria.
Ori, yes. I am sure you are in touch with many amazing women. What were the most recent projects that you supported that really stuck out to you? Thank you so much. Um, yes, you're right. Um, we work with incredible girls and women, and girls who grew up to become incredible women. And um, I think all our projects are contributing to raising these amazing women. I mean, I can talk about um, all our alumni. Um, Sophia attended our She Creates camp um, when she was just a teenager, and now she's studying computer science um, in the university. Uh, we have Ferami, who also attended our camp, and she's studying cybersecurity. Security. And um, we have Chioma, who also attended our camp, has come back to volunteer, and she's studying robotics engineering. So I think for us, our greatest project is supporting all these young women, offering them volunteering opportunities, offering them more training, and most importantly, mentorship and support, so they, they can really take their place as women in technology. Thank you so much for doing this amazing work. Thank you, thank you. Let me now invite uh, Rinalia Abulrahim, Senior Vice President for Strategy and Implementation at ISOC, to present one of the two Equals in Tech Awards in the category of Leadership. Thank you, Chris and Christoph. Hello, everyone. My name is Rinalia Abdulrahim. There is a letter missing on the slide, but no matter. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you today, particularly for this occasion. Equals has two awards in the category of leadership. The first recognizes leadership achievements in the tech sector. The second recognizes entrepreneurial leadership in a women-led business. I'd like to invite my colleague, Jorge Cancio, Deputy Head International Relations with the Swiss Federal Office of Communications, to join me here to help me confer these awards on this year's Outstanding Leaders. <laughs> yes. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Rinalia. It is really wonderful to be able to join you all here to recognize and to celebrate these exceptional winners from all around the world. So, in this sense, I'm delighted to confer the Equals in Tech 2019 Award for Leadership in the tech sector to an organization doing an amazing job in expanding uh, opportunities for employment to women all around the world. The award goes to She Works, yes. Silvina Moschini. So, Silvina, um, let me uh, take the opportunity um, to, to ask you one thing, because um, basically these days everybody seems to be talking about machine learning, and you guys um, took that technology and um, used it to connect uh, unemployed women with potential employers. And um, I'm sure um, a lot of people in the room, including myself, uh, asked the question, how did you get the idea to leverage that technology? Thank you, Chris. And actually, it comes to a personal story. I got married at 35, and of course, the options to meet someone on their real physical world were very limited. So I got the inspiration from Match.com. I figured it was a numbers game. So I applied the same concept of data science, machine learning, to connect wonderful women from around the world with job opportunities that could be done online, remotely, because at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. Thank you. Sabina, thank you so much. And now for the second leadership award. It gives me great pleasure to announce that the Equals in Tech 2019 Leadership Award for Outstanding Female Entrepreneurship goes to Kumasi Hive, Ghana.
So Sandra, your programs have already led to 60 female-led tech startups at this point. Why is it so important to you to get more women involved in this tech sector? Thank you so much for the question. Um, I would say, in short, the bridging the digital agenda divide is a problem that still exists. And then in order to do this, we need to get more women into tech. We need to create an inclusive environment. We need to create an equal environment where there'll be gender equality for women in tech as well. Therefore, we need to get more women into tech. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, thank you both. And um, we have already reached the fifth and final Equals in Tech Award for 2019. And to confer this final award in the area of research, please welcome to the stage Dr. Urs Gasser, Executive Director of the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard Law School. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. What a wonderful occasion. Uh, indeed, already the last uh, reward and award, but by no means the least. Um, I think all of us who do work in tech and gender in that space understand how urgent it is that we have more data, that we have better metrics um, that help us to close the gender gaps. Um, it's currently the case that we often lack uh, the data uh, to formulate our policies and strategies um, to really make our strategies and interventions as powerful as they could be and to track the progress that we collectively make together. Uh, so more research indeed is, is needed and so I'm very uh, pleased tonight to recognize and celebrate with you the wonderful work um, that many colleagues, including many female colleagues, are doing in the research space to help us bridge uh, the gender gap. So this year's award for outstanding re research that has made a positive contribution to closing the digital gender divide goes to the China Davis Institute and Lida Hill Philanthropies for portray her representations of women STEM characters in media. Congratulations. Mary Ellen, um, imagine uh, for one second, I'm not that uh, good looking moderator standing next to you, but uh, imagine I am a movie director and um, I plan uh, to shoot a sci-fi movie. And uh, now I'm coming to you uh, because I know that you know a lot about representation um, um, of, of, of uh, women uh, in, in media and I come to you and I ask you, so what do I need to think about when I do this film? How do I need to portray female characters in my sci-fi movie? So what's your advice to me? Okay, um, my advice to you would be that um, first of all, you're very, very powerful because content, content creators have the ability to change and portray life as it should be on screen with women actually being 50% or more um, representation in the production, which is something that we're not seeing right now. What we're seeing right now is men two to one in lead positions and speaking time. And so you've got the opportunity really to change the world. Um, in terms of a sci-fi movie, what it's all about is space. And um, when you think about space and you think about the fact that the world is changing to become more intersectional, more multicultural, um, you really need to think about the casting of characters, not just the leads, but um, the characters throughout the film. 
And in STEM films, you need to think about what they're doing and not just um, putting them in life sciences roles, but putting them in technology, engineering, and other roles. Um, so what I would suggest that you do is actually look at the script, change all of the names to female characters, and see if it works. Good luck. Thank you so much. That sounds like a really good plan. Thank you. Thank you. What a great note to uh, end on because we are already coming to the end of this evening's award ceremony. Uh, and all the directors in the room and out there, now you know what you have to do. So thank you for that. But before we invite all the winners and presenters to join us for a photo, I would like to recognize two of our finalists who have come to Berlin for the Internet Governance Forum and who have joined us at this ceremony. Saba Khalid from Aurat Raj and Cheryl van Dijk and Katja Legisa from the Digital Leadership Institute. Where are you? Show yourselves. So, you already did that, but I think you can even do better. So, let's give them another round of applause, please. Yes. So, let me now invite all the winners and our distinguished presenters to join us uh, here um, in front of the audience for another group photo. And uh, while everybody is going back to the stage, and you're used to it now, give them another round of applause, please. Is it better if they move them? Down? Maybe they move down. Down, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. let's move. Yeah. Dorin, go down, it's better. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. You just have an accent. The minister of the ah. Oh my god, the minister. The no. Ah, I don't think it's a So, this picture was already an amazing picture, but what we would love to see is you here in front with us, with all the winners. So, if you don't mind, come here, join us, have your picture taken now. And on the way, memorize the equals sign. They should take, can you take all this thing? Because they should put these.
Yes, of course. Thank you so much. So that wraps up the formal part of our ceremony. I guess it is wrapped up already. The formal part of the ceremony is officially wrapped up now. Uh, but um, um, let us once again thank the generous sponsors, the Internet Society, the governments of Germany and Switzerland in Massat for making this evening possible. And it now gives us especially great pleasure to invite you all to join us for a cocktail reception at the table set up just behind your seats. And um, this is an ideal networking event. There are so many amazing people here. You've heard from some. You should learn from more. So um, do yourself a favor and try to talk to at least one person you haven't already talked to, you don't know, and you're, I'm sure you'll meet extremely interesting people in this room. Cocktails are ready. Let's go. Let's have fun. Thank you. Thank you all. Good evening. Thanks.